Hey everybody, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this video, I want to show you three simple tools to use when beginning editing a landscape photo. The first tool I want to show you is a super important tool, especially in landscape photography, and that is the crop tool. Cropping is a very important aspect of landscape photography because more often than not, people are using wide angle lenses. And what wide angle lenses do is they capture a lot of scenery. The crop tool is a very important tool because it allows you to frame your subject without any of the distractions or excess in the background that you don't want. So for this photo, I just want to crop out this patch of water down here because it's not really doing anything for my photo. So I can go to crop and I can hold down shift to maintain the aspect ratio of my crop. And then I can drag it up where I want it to be. That looks good about there. And now I want to level my photo. So unless you shoot on a tripod, more often than not, you're going to have to level your photo in some way because it's hard to keep your camera straight all of the time. So if we want to level our photo, we can just simply click this level tool here. And you don't need to click inside of the crop to straighten your photo. You can click outside of it. So just find a straight line and then click and drag. And it'll straighten your photo right out. And now you can hit enter and now your photo's cropped. You can see that by removing that area of water on the bottom of my photo, that it really brought this mountain to life and made it the subject of the photo. So now that we have our photo cropped, what I would do next is I would set the overall tonality. For the sake of the video, however, I'm just going to hit auto, just so we have a basic look for our photo and we're not just staring at the raw image file. Now that we've cropped our photo and set the overall tonality for our photo, what we need to deal with now is the color in our photo. And that brings me to my next tip, which is to use color enhancer inside of effects. So if we head into effects and we add filter and let's add color enhancer. And you'll notice that there's a ton of different controls within color enhancer. These controls allow you to edit all of the certain colors within your photo and also the overall temperature, tint, saturation, and vibrance, just like you would inside of develop. But the great thing about using Color Enhancer instead of Effects, rather than editing your colors instead of Develop, is that you can use the different masking and blending modes to make your colors look more realistic and natural. So if I wanted to edit the colors on this photo, I know that there's a lot of blues on this photo and it's dealing a lot with the sky. So I'm just going to use the preset style, Sky. And that really upped my blues. It almost made them too oversaturated but again, the great thing about using Color Enhancer is that it's super easy to just lower the opacity and make it seem more natural. So now if we turn that off and on, you'll notice that it doesn't do a whole lot to our photo, but it does bring up the blues quite a bit in the sky and on the mountain, and that's all really we're looking for. So now that we've cropped our photo and we've set the tone and we've dealt with the color a little bit, the next thing I want to show you is how you can add dynamic contrast to make a subject pop. So to add dynamic contrast, let's go to add filter and let's add dynamic contrast. And once you apply dynamic contrast, it's going to apply the filter to your entire photo. A good rule of thumb when adding dynamic contrast is to go into the masking options and you'll see that this box right here is all white which means it's revealing all of the mask onto your photo. So if we invert that, it's going to turn it black, which is going to conceal the mask from your photo. So white reveals, black conceals. Now what we can do, now that we've inverted the mask, is we can take our masking brush and we can make sure we're set to paint in. And now we can simply paint in the areas on our photo where we want there to be dynamic contrast. And you'll see that if you turn this off and on, it looks a lot better than it did before with all of the dynamic contrast on the clouds and on the trees here. So now that you have those three tools in your tool bag to when you're starting off editing a landscape photo, I wanna show you a few filters that I like to use when editing my landscape photos that would look good on this particular image. So a great filter I like to use when I'm editing landscape photos is the sunshine filter. So if we go to add filter, 
and let's go to sunshine. What the sunshine filter is going to do is it's going to emulate a sunshine look. It's going to increase your highlights and decrease your shadow tones, which is going to bring out the brighter parts of your photo. Usually when I add sunshine, I don't really deal with too much of the opacity or the blending because the filter itself is pretty good on its own. The next filter I want to show you is a great filter for landscapes because it really focuses the viewer's eye on your subject when there's a lot going on in the foreground or background. So let's add filter and let's add a vignette. And my favorite of the vignettes is definitely Big Softy. And that looks a little strong, so what I want to do is I can turn down the opacity or I can leave the opacity at 100 and deal with the actual vignette itself. So let's just increase the size a little bit so it's not so tight on my subject. And maybe just the brightness a tad. And let's turn it on and off to see how it looks. And yeah, you can see that by adding that vignette, it really focuses the viewer's eye on the top of this mountain here, rather than having their eye be distracted by all of the areas around it. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, you can see that we really did a lot to this photo in not a lot of time. Thank you for watching Tip of the Week. I'm Dylan with On One, and stay tuned for more.